we haven't really had a lot of new agents recently, but there's been further exploration of how do we best use the antiangiogenesis agents that we have. So there's still a lot of um, interest in using bevacizumab, and so there were some updates on maintenance studies, uh, including the ECOG 5508 study, which looked at carboplatin, paclitaxel, bevacizumab. And then for patients who had not progressed, they either continued the bevacizumab alone, continued it with the addition of pemetrexid, or just went on pemetrexid. And the study showed that the combination of both drugs had a better progression-free survival, but no overall survival. And in this era, we don't tend to use that regimen as much first line anyway, and we don't use switch maintenance. So it was an exciting trial when designed, but didn't really change what we're doing in practice. Uh, there was an additional trial, the COMPASS trial, which started with carboplatin pemetrexid bevacizumab, and then continued both drugs or just the bevacizumab, and same, both drugs better PFS, not clearly OS different. So just some maintenance issues, not really changing what we do. I also talked about the Empower um, uh, uh, trial, Empower 150 study, which was carboplatin, paclitaxel, with or without bevacizumab, with or without atezolizumab. Um, and it's really the first trial that's combining antiangiogenesis agent with immune therapy. And of course, we're all very excited about what's happening with checkpoint inhibitors, PD-1, PD-L1 drugs. And so with that trial, the study showed that the four drug regimen actually improved PFS and OS in all comers. Um, but also in those who had EGFR mutations. Um, oh, uh, the overall survival through there wasn't necessarily statistically significant, but was impressive. Um, and there was a few patients who had ALK as well. So it's the only time we have positive overall survival data in patients who have driver mutations with immune checkpoint inhibitors. So that's another particular subset, and whether that's immune or the antiangiogenesis, we don't know.